Hey everybody, Rachel here from RachelStamper.com and today I was going to play around with the brand new um, Fluid 100 watercolor paper that Stampin' Up! carries. So this is a newer paper. Our other paper um, was a different paper. I don't believe it was as heavy weight, so I believe this is 100 pound weight. Um, and I'm trying to see on here if it says it is a... It doesn't say if it is hot or cold pressed, so I don't really know that. I do typically use, um, just as a sidebar for some other product, I have used before um, Strathmore watercolor paper. This is a cold press. And the main difference is when you have a cold press versus a hot press water paper, it, it kind of changes how it absorbs the water. So this comes now, it is five by seven. So what I did was I just took a piece of watercolor paper and I cut it in half. So these are three and a half by, I'm sorry, three, five by seven. So it would be three and a half by five. So three and a half by five. And then I just took some um, frog tape and taped about a, probably about a quarter inch around the whole side. I did get these boards. These are hard boards. They came in a bigger pack. I got them from Amazon because I figured I would kind of use them for classes. So I have a whole bunch of them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these two different ways just so you can see the difference. Um, you might be able to hear in the background I have my heat tool heating up just to dry it because I'm going to try to do something that I've seen done many times before but I've never done it myself. So I'm going to give it a shot and see what it looks like. Um, it's a galaxy background is what I'm going for. And I just want to show you um, two quick cards that I created for the teacher and the teacher's assistant at school since it's the first day of or the first week of school is over. And I used the uh, Hello Harvest bundle. So you can see I did one with a uh, Granny Smith, a green apple, and some very old paper, if you notice here. This is one of my favorite papers. I actually have a whole entire another pack of it because I loved it so much. So this is just a piece of the alphabet that I had left from that. And then I used some of the black foil paper. And then this is from the... Um, Harvest Hello stamp set. And then for the other one, if you recall, a while back I did this mask, and this is when I did these other, I'll show you these two. I, I finally pulled one of these out, and I thought I was going to make a card with it, so I used this one. What I did was I had gone over the stencil, and I did this with Garden Green, and then I went back after it dried, and I filled it in with a little bit of, I believe that was Mango Melody, probably a little Granny Apple Green, and then maybe some, ooh, what did I use? It must have been a pink color. So I did finish that, but then I also, for a little added bonus, I ran this through, I'm not sure if you can see, I ran it through the Subtles embossing folder just to give it a little bit of extra texture. And then for this one I made um, with a pumpkin, I also texturized this piece of Granny Apple Green just to kind of tie it together. So those are the two teacher cards that I created. So I thought I would share those with you as well before I handed them out. And so what I'm going to do for the watercolor today is I'm going to do them two different ways because you can watercolor a multitude of ways. But what we're going to do first is for one of them, I'm going to wet the paper ahead of time. And then for the other one, I'm going to wet it as we go. Okay, so one of them will be wet watercoloring, and I'm going to use, I believe, the bigger brush for the wet. Yeah, because these do come in. The Aqua Painters have a, one has a smaller brush, and then one has a wider brush. So what I'm going to do is I do have a towel here. This is just one of my shop towels. I'm sure I've seen you, you've seen me use a million times, so I'm just making sure the tip is clean. And you could also do this just with an aqua painter and instead of filling it, you could just have a uh, cup of water that you dipped into if you'd like. So it just kind of depends what you want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a few colors. I'm going to go with Gorgeous Grape and then I want a blue. I'm going to do Balmy Blue and I think I want a green as well. I know that might sound a little weird, but... I think I'm going to do Granny Apple Green. So those are going to be the three colors that I use. And then what I'm going to also do is I'm going to go over it with black. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to use, hmm, do I want to use the Memento? If I want to use Memento or if I would rather use um, Stays On because I do have refills for both. So I haven't decided on that one yet. We're going to have to wait and see as we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wet the background of this one so I'm just wetting it you don't want it soaking wet you just kind of want to go over the whole thing make sure you can see when you look at the paper so if you turn it to the side you can see if there's any dry spots so just make sure you kind of watercolor over everything just to make sure it's slightly 
I don't want to say wet, you just want it moist. And the reason I taped it is to help prevent the warping. So what I'm going to do is I taped it down and then I'm going to heat it dry. That way it will stay kind of maintain its shape. And actually, instead of the balmy blue, I want to go with something a little bit darker. So just for something different, I'm going to do pretty peacock. So what I'm going to do is with these newer stamp pads, you kind of squeeze the center and then you'll create a pool. So I'm going to do that for all three. And you can also flip, see if I can do this without making it. You can press the end. Is that the right one? I know you can press the end and it'll pop open, but apparently it's not wanting to work for me today. <laughs> oh, there you go. You do it this way. So if you hold it, you do it, press this way and it'll open it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the granny apple green and I'm just going to drop a little water in here and just kind of spread it around. Now when you have the wet paper, it kind of will help the the, oh, that's a little something or other. It will help the color to move around a little bit better versus, so you can see it kind of spreads out and then you could also tilt your, tilt your uh, paper so you can tilt your board and it will help it to move. Now I'm going to go into the peacock. I'm just going to wet this just a little bit and you can see it kind of, it call, it's called blooming. So it will actually help the color bloom and we'll do that a little bit over here. And you don't really have to wet it. I mean, if you want it darker, because we do want this completely colored, you just want to kind of make sure you don't let them cross too much so they don't get muddy. And I believe you also do have to be a little bit careful of when you choose your colors so you don't pick colors that become brown because, you know, nobody really wants a brown sky. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of, and I did pick Gorgeous Grape because it is a deeper purple. So I'll just bring this in over here. We'll spread it around. If you um, squeeze your brush, it will be a little bit more liquidy and then it will help it to move a little bit more versus you splotching. You can kind of tilt your color and have it run. It's always handy as well to keep a um, a paper towel handy in case you don't like the way it turns out you can kind of absorb it so right here the green and the purple are kind of making a little brown so I'm gonna kind of avoid doing that again I'm gonna put this here okay so for now this is the same we're gonna do I'm gonna set this on the side so this is the wet one I'm not gonna dry it just yet I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm gonna just set this on the side in case I wanna add more. I'm gonna use the smaller brush and now we're gonna do it dry. So what we're gonna do is since we've already added some water, we're just gonna ink up our aqua painter and just add in. And what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna squeeze a little bit so I can kind of make it run a little bit more. And this one isn't going to run as much. You can see it kind of stays where it's wet. It's not going outside of the wet border. So you kind of have to spread it around a little bit more. Just do a little bit in the center. Okay, and just wipe that off. Now I'm gonna do the same with the peacock. And just bring that over. Again, if you wanna squeeze it a little bit more, you can. It's only going to bleed thus far if it happens to meet a wet border. So as you can see there, that was a wet border, so it's bleeding a little bit more. Which kinda of is neat because it will give a cool feeling. So watch this one here when we do that. We'll put this here. You see it's bleeding right into that wet spot there. Put a little bit more on the bottom here. All right, and this one I'm gonna make a little bit more heavy on the purple, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of grape, and I'm gonna try to keep this so it doesn't become a yucky mess. So I'm not really squeezing, even though I'm looking like I'm holding it tight, I'm not really squeezing the water when I do it because I'm trying to keep these colors as individual colors. But I do want to make sure I cover so there's no white sticking out. So I need to, I can go back. I'm going to add just a little purple here in the corner. And 
and I'm trying not to go too much that I will go underneath of the paper, if that makes sense. And I'm just going to fill in with a little bit more peacock in these couple little white spots. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the lid on the paints. You could wipe them out if you if you would like. I'm not going to in case I want to add any more. Um, and also it will dry eventually. So this again was the dry. And this one is the wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my heat tool and I'm just going to bring this over. I'm going to crank it up a little bit and I'm just going to dry this. You can certainly let it set to dry because it will dry with a different look if it dries naturally versus being heated. However, for the sake of time, I don't edit any of my videos. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to give you a genuine image of what it looks like without the drying time. So you do want to keep moving it around just because it will flatten it out a little bit more uniformly. And I'm going to let that set for a minute. I'm going to dry the one that was dried. You can always take a paper towel and absorb a little bit of the water if you wanted to. So since we have kind of a little puddle here, we could take our shop towel and just pick up. It will definitely lighten up the color if you do that. And again, just moving it around. just going to check the dryness because you definitely want this dry before moving on. This is pretty dry. I'm going to just hit it just for another minute. If you've never watched me before, by the way, this is called The Boss. You can get this from a company called Crafter Solution. Um, Lisa and her husband, John, create these. It is a um, USA company. They are based in Ohio. They make all of their own products. You can get The Boss customized. Someone was nice enough to send me this one here. But what you can do is you can put your um, heat tool on this and let it heat up, and you can set it down. You can grip it, but that way it'll heat up without you having to worry about anything getting burned. So one other thing I want to point out, you do have a little bit of brown here from the muddiness, but what we're going to do, the way I want to do it is I'm going to cover this with black. So technically it should be fine because we're going to cover it so you shouldn't see that brown anyway. So in case you're concerned about that, we'll, we'll deal with that at another time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my memento pad and I'm going to take, and I'm going to see, I don't know, I've not done this before, so we'll see if this works. I'm going to take a little bit of my memento ink and I'm gonna put it in the lid. And then I'm gonna grab my bigger brush and I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to it just to kind of spread it because I don't want it too black. And I don't exactly know, not done this before with, this is a, a very black ink. I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but hopefully my brush is gonna work after this too. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put, put a wash over this and I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Ooh, that is super black. <laughs> Let me rinse this out a little bit. So I'm kind of wetting this and then I'm gonna sop it up. So you definitely wanna have your towel handy with this. And again, just kind of sopping up and it's gonna get lighter in certain spaces. So you just wanna make sure a couple things that you kind of really go all over the place with this. And you don't really want to go like I did here with lines. So you want to try to do it more so with a, a swirl. So you kind of pick up that natural. If you were to have, if you were to imagine like a space cloud, what it would look like. And you want to cover up some of the color. So you don't really want to have any of the true color showing through. Just 
a little bit more here. You kind of want it just to peek through in spots. So this area right here is a little dark and it's also a little liney because of the way I was going. But again, this was my first time, so all good to know. Let me clean out my brush. Let's see what this looks like. It could be a little bit stained, but it doesn't look like it's affecting the cleanness of it. And I will test this before we're finished just to make sure. I want to bring a little bit more in. Just over a couple of these spots. Pick it up. Okay, so this was the, again, this was the wet. So we're going to let this one dry. Now I'm going to do this. And now that I know better, I'm going to swirl instead of striping. I think I've also mentioned this before that I get these, um, towels at I think I got them at Costco once before and you have like a bag of 16 I've pretty much used the same four all the time <laughs> I just wash them they're microfiber towels so they don't leave any lint or dust and they do actually come pretty clean considering and also one other thing to remember this is going to lighten up once it dries so we are going to go ahead and dry this one more time Okay, so this is, and I'm going to clean this off. So let me just squeeze this. So what I'm going to do is just squeeze onto my towel here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, just to take a look, let's see if I have some scrap paper. I'm going to just paint. This is the brush I wiped off. And let me squeeze through, see if I can get some. And it is painting clear. So even though it is stained very, very clearly, it is stained black, it isn't painting black. So you shouldn't have to worry about it staining your, um, your brush that it's not usable again. So what I'm going to do, just for the sake of this, because this is a little bit liquidy, is I'm going to go ahead and put this in. You could do this with a paper towel, but since this is already dirty, I just want to wipe this out because I feel like if I went to put this on, it's gonna drip anyway. So I'm gonna cover up my memento. Another thing you could do if you wanted to is you could always use a uh, a clear block to put a drop on. That way you weren't worrying about dumping it out and getting it on there. So once more, I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool just to help it dry a little bit. And I'm not 100% sure what it's gonna look like, so we will see. This was the uh, wet painting, and again, this was the dry. I only remember because I moved them over in order, so I know, do know which is which. And we're gonna do one more thing before we're fully finished with this. And I'm gonna do it before I take off the um, painter's tape. It's pretty dry just the corners a little bit you could also do this with watercolor paints which I'm probably guessing would give you a much lighter black so if you wanted to you could do it with stamping up colors and then maybe just use a black watercolor paint to do the black portion pretty dry okay so what I'm gonna do now typically I do have um, white craft ink so I'm gonna use this I know I have watched uh, Jennifer McGuire and Christina Werner there's probably my two favorite people to watch do watercolors um, I have watched them before and they use something called gouache which is I believe a watercolor type paint but it's not specifically watercolor so I instead, I'm going to use what I have, I'm going to use white craft ink and I'm going to use a block. That's typically, I have seen them do it that way. I am going to clean my block off first because it's definitely very goopy. And just as an uh, FYI, if you do use Stampin' Up! blocks or any acrylic blocks, you can clean them off with soap and warm water if you have like any residual sticky stuff or if, if you use them for a project or you use them with colors, you can clean them off. I usually typically wipe them with baby wipes and then maybe once every couple months I'll take them downstairs and wash them all in the sink. So I just gave that a good wipe off and I'm going to dry it. 
And then what I'm going to do is put, and the craft ink is definitely super thick. So I'm going to put just two drops for now, two large drops. And I'm going to, which one has more? I think this one does. I'm going to put some water. Oop, that one's still a little black. I didn't clean that one out. <laughs> that may end up yucky. Let's see. Wipe. I'm going to pick this up with my do-over because I didn't clean that and I don't want it to end up looking terrible. Let me clean this off. Okay. So, that one I forgot to clean. <laughs> so, starting again, I'm going to put two generous drops of the Craft Ink onto an acrylic block. Now, I'm not going to use this brush because I know white craft ink is a little bit more difficult to get off. So what I'm going to do, and I probably should have used a little bit larger of a brush, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is I have a, quite a few brushes here, but I also have quite a few blender brushes that I've used with white paint. Typically, they are pretty stained. As you can see, this one is around the edge. I also have a separate one for black ink. So I'm going to just use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it up. And it would be better if you have a, um, a brush that has a little bit of give to it, but we're going to try it with this. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to grab just a scrap paper. I'll do this one at a time. So this is the wet. So just for that, so I'm just going to Click this off. Oop, that's a little more than I wanted. Which is probably why it would be a little bit better if you had a looser brushed, looser brush. Let me put a little bit more of this water on here so it's a little bit more watery. Oop, that might be a little too much. Keep my towel handy here. I'm going to mix this up and I kind of just want to flick. So it kind of makes like, whew, that's a little bit larger of a star, but. I'm gonna try one more thing. So that was a blender pen. That doesn't really give you the nice splattery effect. So I'm actually gonna get one of my, if I can find one here, here it is. One of my better paint brushes. So this is just a regular bristle brush. It's a size four. So I'm just gonna, whoop, this one of course is not clean either cause I'm not great at cleaning stuff. I'm gonna flick. There we go. That's much better of a galaxy. So these don't work as well. So I would say definitely get yourself a paintbrush. So I'm going to set this on the side and now we have the dry one. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to flick. There we go. That's going to be good. I'm not going to do any more than that because sometimes I overdo it. So I'm just going to wipe off my block for now. This definitely needs to be cleaned because clearly I did not clean it the last time. And I'm going to just give that just a second to dry while I clean this off. And then I'm going to take these apart. I'll take the borders off of them and show you what they look like. Now, I'm not going to mount these today only because I do want them to dry fully before we mount them. So you definitely want to make sure that you do that. Just kind of wiping this off a little bit and this needs to be washed. And then th when you use the, um, the craft paint or the black paint on your blender pen, you kind of have to dedicate a side to it. No matter how much you clean this, if it is used in craft white or black ink, it will not come clean. So I typically have one that is white and one that is black. So just for your information. Let me just wipe this off and move these out of the way. And we'll take this, put this over here. Just make sure I don't have any little drippy messes. Try to find a clean side of this and we will do the reveal. Okay, so once again, this was the one we did dry. So I'm gonna do the wet one first. So what you typically wanna do is you wanna pull against your paper. Now I did go ahead and wrap this around to the back only because I didn't cut them very well. That tends to be how I roll. So I'm going to pull this. I'm going to just go in order and you want to pull it back onto itself. And just so happens the way I taped is why I got a super nice border. And I'm just going to hold this down. You could measure if you wanted to, but that's a lot of effort. I don't usually put that much effort into taping things off. Plus, I think you get a nice 
organic look if you're not really being particularly anal about it but that's just me so there's one that was the wet which I do think looks really cool probably could use a little bit more splatter so I may add it and the, the splatter does take a little bit to dry so this is definitely not dry thus far so there's one and if you're still with me thus far thank you so much for staying and watching I know this was a little bit longer of a video but definitely well worth it watercoloring is usually a longer video to watch just FYI I'm gonna pull this back this was the dry so we did not wet this one before you can see that everything is a little bit lighter and also if you do this um, purple tape works really well I don't have purple tape I need to invest in some but purple tape works really well at not pulling your paper if you can see it is pulling a little bit of the paper here so just be careful. I would not use blue tape because blue tape definitely rips the end of the paper off. But it kind of gives you like a portrait-ish look. So this is the wet. And I know also because the way I did the streaks. <laughs> and this is the dry. So they are definitely two different looks. But I do think they kind of have that ethereal look to them. Um, you are supposed to be able to see some color. But again, it's supposed to kind of be like that black spacey spacey like look if you were to um if that makes sense so what i'm going to do is i have a little pencil here i'm just so i know for future i'm going to put this one as the wet and then this one is the dry that way when i'm finished and they're fully finished what i will do is i'll take a picture of both and put them onto the blog so you can see what they look like and then eventually i will finish these cards but just a really quick in case you want to see a little closer on the dry you can see that the stars are much lighter and thus far, these are still not completely dry. On the wet, they're a little bit darker. However, they will definitely lighten up as they dry. So that is something else to keep in mind. So the white craft paint does not typically give you that stark white look, probably like the gouache does. So I might also have to invest in that and then give this a second try to see how that works. But if you're in a pinch, it will at least give you that. And then the other thing you could do as well, and where is mine? I moved it. You could always do a white gel pen if you wanted to. And you could kind of add in some little tiny extra white stars if you wanted to. You could add like a bigger star with a little bit of a cross. So it looks like it has a little beam sticking off of it. You could maybe make a little constellation. So you could go ahead in with your gel pen if you wanted to and add some additional white to it. Just kind of depends on what you want to do. But thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all of your views and your likes and your shares. If you're not already, if you click the subscribe button, it will notify you when I um, put out a new video. And you also have to click the bell because there's a subscribe, which basically just means that it'll generally alert you. But if you hit the bell, every time I either go live on YouTube or if I create a video, it'll send you a notification that there's a new video to watch. I thank you guys so very much for watching. If you would like to get any of these supplies, you can go to my online store, reachthestamper.stampinup.net. You can find all of the information on the finished cards on the blog once I'm done with them at reachthestamper.com. And if you have any questions or you would like to become a Stampin' Up! demonstrator or you would like to shop with me and need a catalog, you can reach me at reachthestamper at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day.